So you know, the, the big question here was how should we present our data? Um, how should we present information? You know, there, there are transparent ways of presenting data, and there are ways that obscure the data. And there are ways that sort of hide what's really going on in the data. And we're going to try to talk about transparent ways of presenting the data. Um, Tufti is a um, professor of political science uh, at Yale. He used to be at Princeton, published, you know, empirical work in, in political science for a while. But he was always really good at and really interested in <laughs> graphical depiction of data, then eventually that sort of became his day job. And actually what's neat about Tufti's book is it's, it's much more than just a book about sort of graphic design. Like, oh, you know, there, is, there are elements of graphic design. Like, what looks good? Like, some of that's in there, for sure. But there's also sophisticated discussion of causality and research design at various points in the book. There's also a big transparency thrust throughout, and we'll see that in sort of his principles and his bullet points about accurate ways of conveying information and data. And that sort of is a thread that, that is found throughout the book. These are a set of issues that I see as kind of tran related to transparency points. So among his eight or nine principles, he says, you know, show the data. Like, that is a pretty simple but important thing to do. Like, you know, w when we see empirical papers or statistical analyses where we don't really see the raw data in any form, we don't see a scatter plot, we don't see any sort of relational graph between variables, um, you know, I think Tufti would say maybe you know, our antennae should sort of perk up a little bit. Like, I, I want to see the data. I want to see patterns in the data. And I think the best empirical work in the social sciences and in other fields is characterized by a certain openness about what the data looks like and, uh, and what it is. So showing the data is important. Avoid distorting the data. A figure, a graphic, should serve a reasonably clear purpose. And he lists out, you know, it might be descriptive. It might be trying to capture a certain causal relationship with a certain research design. It may have some other goal. But when you look at it, it should be clear. Or with a you know, sort of figure description, it should be clear what the goal of the figure is. Um, and then four, it should induce the reader to think about the substance. So there should be more than uh, just some sort of statistical exercise involved. Um, there should be a link to something important, something that matters, something substantive. And you know, this is one of the you know, the points that comes through the book again and again and again, that effective graphics are much more than just art or much more than sort of putting statistics in an image. Uh, there has to be a real uh, depth of sort of intellectual understanding to create a good graphic. So that, that's something that, that comes through. Okay, so that's, these are really transparency-related points um, that I think are good general principles. Then there's a second set of issues that, um, you know, I guess, uh, speak to other issues. You know, one value of, of graphics, and we'll come up with, a, you know, show examples of this in a second, is they allow you to uh, absorb lots of data. They make large data sets coherent. You can present a lot in a small space. You can present a lot more data in less space. Good graphics or figures also reveal patterns in the data, potentially at different levels of detail. Sometimes you get you know, at different geographic aggregation, uh, sometimes different time scales are revealed all within one, one graphic. Um, incur they encourage the eye to compare different pieces of data. Of course, that's natural um, and much easier to do sometimes in a, in a figure than in a table. And um, this is the last point. We'll come to this sort of at the very end of the lecture today, um, that good graphics are able to integrate a lot of different elements. Good graphics integrate... Um, you know, uh, words, verbal descriptions. They integrate statistical concepts and statistical, you know, coefficient estimates. Um, and, and then there's certain visual patterns they bring out. So some of the most effective graphics are, in some sense, quite complicated. Um, but uh, the art, of course, in this is, is conveying that complicated information in a way that's comprehensible. So these are just some ideas. We're going to go through these, you know, not exactly one at a time, but we're going to touch on these in the course of the lecture with specific examples. And I think the hope of this is, A, to make us all think about our own research and our own figures and incorporate some of these ideas into our, our work, um, both in terms of making our, our figures and our tables, too, uh, more effective at doing what they're supposed to do and more transparent.